Hello everyone, welcome to Pseudocodus. This is Ravina, and today we are going to look at lead code problem number 56, which is merge intervals. Let's start by looking at the sum here. It says that given an array of intervals where intervals of i is start of i and end of i, merge all the overlapping intervals and return n, an array of the non overlapping intervals that cover all the intervals in the input. Let's start by understanding the problem here. The, the, we have been given an intervals list. And inside that list, we have several intervals where this is the start date, a start time, and this is the end time. Uh, now we have to find some overlapping intervals here and merge them. So let's look at this example. This one starts at one, ends at three, whereas this one starts at two, which is before three really, and ends at six. If you look at it, they are actually overlapping. One is from one to three, the second is from two to six, that means two and three, and th this particular interval is overlapping. That means that we can actually make this one interval that starts from one and maximum of the two. So maximum of either three or six, which is six. So we can make this actually one interval of one comma six, and that's what's here. Looking at the second interval we have, it's eight comma 10. Now let's see if this overlaps with any of the intervals that we have. We have one comma six, okay, and we have 15 comma 18. Uh, eight comma 10 is actually independent. It is not overlapping with any of the intervals. So we can keep it as it is. That's why we can add eight comma 10 to our output. Lastly, we have 15 comma 18. This is also an independent interval because there is nothing overlapping at this point. So we will add 15 comma 18 to our output. Lastly, this is how the output is going to look. It's going to be 1, 6, 8, 10, and 15, 18. Now, let's see how we can solve this. Let me open my notepad really quick. Okay, so uh, I'm having this example here, and I did shuffle some of the uh, intervals, and I will tell you why. In your example, this example really has the start time uh, in the sorted way, but it's not always the case. And that's uh, that's one thing that you have to keep in mind. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort this list by the start time in the ascending order so that it will be much easier for me to merge it later. So the first step is to sort it with the start time. So let me do that now. Uh, if I sort this to start, start time, it will be 1, 3, 2, 6. The next smallest start time is 8. So 8 comma 10 and lastly 15 comma 18. So after sorting, this is what we get. The next thing I need is my result list, which I'm going to call as merged. Okay, I have this list initialized. Cool, now I am going to go through each of the intervals and check is my merged list empty. If it's empty, then I'm just going to append my interval to it because I need something to start off. The second thing that I'm going to check is my end time in my merge list less than the interval, the start time of the interval that I have. If that is true, if my end time is less than the start time of the interval, then I'm good. It's independent, right? So for example, if something ends at two and the other thing ends at four, that makes my most intervals end time less than my start uh, interval uh, the current interval start time that means they are independent so if that is the case i'm just gonna append the interval to my merge list otherwise i am going to update the end time of my most uh, of my uh, element in the merge list i'm going to take maximum of the end time that i have in the merge list versus the end time i have in my interval list now let's see how it goes i have I come across this first element. I check, is my merged list empty? Yes, it is. Okay, I add it to my merged list. I go to my second element. I come across two six. Is my merged list empty? No. Okay, on to the second check. My second check is, is my end time of merged list less than my uh, interval's start time? Is three less than two? No. That means these are overlapping intervals and we have to update the end time of my element in my merged list. And what's it going to be? It's going to be maximum 
of the two n times so maximum of six and maximum maximum of six and three which comes out to be six so this is going to be six okay moving on to my next element i get eight comma ten i'm going to check if my uh, merged list is empty no it's not okay i'm going to check is my uh, end time of my merged interval is it actually less than the interval start time yes it is that means i can just append the current interval so i append 8 comma 10. moving on to the next one is my merged list empty no is my intervals end time less than the uh, intervals start time yes it is that means that is independent so i add simply append it to my merged list when i reach the end of the list this is my output now let's see how we can convert this into code let me make this big okay so the first thing that i need to do is sort it based on the start time so i'm going to do intervals dot sort my key is lambda where i'm going to sort it with the start time that's why i have x of zero the next thing i have is my merged list which i'm going to just initialize now i have to go through intervals through intervals so for for interval in intervals for every interval in intervals i check if my merged list is empty or I check if my merge list's last uh, end time is it smaller than my interval's start time. So I get my end uh, end sequence by using merged of minus one that will give me the last element. And then this is the end time. So index of one is less than my interval's start time, which is zero. If that is true, then I just append it to my merged list. So I append my interval to my merged list. Otherwise, that means that they are overlapping. So I need to update my last element's end time. So I update my last element's end time with, by taking maximum of my last element's end time and my intervals and my intervals end time. Lastly, I just return the merged list. Let's see if we can run this. Okay, I think I made a small mistake somewhere. Uh, it's max of most of minus one, one, or the intervals. Oh, sorry, it should be interval. Let me try again. Yes, it runs. So let me try and submit this. Yes, it was submitted faster than 75%. So let's talk about the space and time complexity of this particular algorithm. The time complexity of this algorithm would be n log n. That is because it takes n log n time complexity to sort. So you perform any type of the sort, keep in mind that it takes n log n time complexity. That will make your life really easy when you are trying to comp uh, you know when you are trying to calculate these time and space complexities so my time complexity here is n log n for the sorting and then here it will be linear with, which is o of n so o of n log n plus o of n which is nothing but n log n so the time complexity is going to be n log n if we talk about the space complexity now just uh, the worst case, let's think about the worst case scenario uh, the worst case scenario is there are no intervals to merge. At that point, my in, my uh, the space required for my intervals list is going to be the same as my merged list. And that makes my space complexity as O of n. So my space complexity is O of n and my time complexity is n log n. Uh, so thanks for watching. Uh, give it a thumbs up or comment on it. It will really help my channel. And please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And you will find uh, uh, this code on my GitHub channel. I'll include the link in the description. And feel free to connect with me on Discord as well. Have a good day.